Hi, and welcome to Knit All The Things. My name is Laurel. I'm also known as West Maven on Instagram, Ravelry, and here. If you're new, this is a space where I talk about all the things I'm knitting, all the things I want to knit, all things yarn, all the things. And if you're returning, thank you again so much for spending your time with me. If you are currently knitting and watching this, I would love to hear what you are making, so make sure to drop that in the comments below. And let's get into it. In this episode, we're going to talk about what's been keeping my hands busy, the summer yarns that I just couldn't live without and my plans for them, a knitting first that I'm kind of ashamed to admit, and a review of the latest Lina Magazine issue 17. So let's get started, shall we? Today I am wearing my ranunculus sweater. This is a pattern by Midori Hirose and it is knit in La Bienna May's uh, mohair in the color cocoa and Chelsea Yarns color straw hat in her MCN base. I did a whole episode on this sweater so I'm not going to go into too much detail and you can find that in episode 5. It will be in this one right here and I will link it below in the description. Anything I talk about today will also be in the description below. What has been keeping my hands busy you ask? Well, I was watching the Grocery Girls. I believe it's been about a week and a half ago. Tracy had cast on her second Miserina sweater and I was really inspired by her first one. I made this one right here and I'll talk about it in a second, but she had just cast on a second one and with her second one, she ended up using a spin cycle yarn for the color work. Now I had this amazing dyed in the wool skein of yarn in the color Shades of Earth. This is what I have left. And it's a really pretty color. I would say that this particular skein really felt like it was a kind of muted or moody rainbow. And then I actually wound this bit off the beginning because it is looking brighter in the camera, but it is a fairly dark color and I didn't think it would work out well. For the main color, I used Knitting for Olive, her cotton merino. And I had actually used this color, which is Slate, for my first Miss Arena shirt. Got some mohair going on today, guys. Um, I used this for my first Miss Arena shirt um, behind me and I'll grab that right now and show you. So for my first, Miss, Miss Serena, I hope I'm saying that right. Miss Serena, Miss Serena um, shirt. I used Ritual Dyes Undine yarn in the colorway slate also. Their slate is more of a blue than really a gray. And then I used the slate knitting for olive in the cotton merino. And I really loved the way that this turned out. I especially loved how the cotton really poofed up in the color work. And so I had always thought, oh, I really do want to knit a second one. I wanted to knit a second one and I also wanted to knit one that was made with the Knitting for Olive because I felt like even though there's merino in this yarn, it does tend to feel very breathable, especially this pattern is very um, open. You knit it at a fairly loose gauge, or I did. It has 70% cotton and 30% merino. So when you're knitting it, it has a really nice hand feel to it. It also is very, I feel like it's very soft and it even has a little bit of stretch to it for a cotton yarn. So I really, really in, have enjoyed knitting with it. So without further ado, here is what I've done. So this is, color is so cool to me. This rainbow effect, it's really looking nice on the camera. I was afraid that some of the green blue area um, down here wouldn't show as well, but it actually looks like it's showing just fine. But this is, I finished the color work and um, split for sleeves and I just really love how this is turning out. I think it's gonna look really nice. With this pattern, I do believe one thing to note, and a lot of Caitlin's patterns are like this, is I believe <laughs> that she is a little bit of a loose knitter. And so how I originally determined what needles I was going to use, because let's be honest, I didn't swatch. Um, I did a few things. I looked through Ravelry. I looked at everybody's notations um, and their descriptions. If anybody had put notes on any 
on the sweater that they had made. I looked through that. I was looking for a wider neckline because it looked like some people who did use the smaller needle size or the ones that the pattern recommended rather were a much tighter on the neck. So I kind of shopped around everybody's pages and I feel like I really like the way this turned out. I did not want it tight on the neck at all. And I really am enjoying how this is turning out. I do think that the yoke took me a little bit longer this time, but I actually did the same technique. So let me grab this one again. So on my first Miserina, I'm gonna show you the insides. I did, uh, I guess it's called ladder back jacquard for the first time. I think this, this sweater looks a little bit nicer than my new one. Um, but you basically, you can see these columns. You're actually catching your floats. That is a mistake. But you're actually catching your floats by anchoring the stitch to your knitting and then you're being able to catch the floats and then you, well, I guess you're knitting it this way. You're catching the floats almost as if double knitting and then you um, basically knit it together with the stitch to anchor it. So that way you have this nice fabric. Your long floats are not gonna pucker or anything. And I actually feel like it keeps them well tensioned by doing this method. So I knew I wanted to do that again with my second sweater. This one, I feel like maybe I made a few fewer mistakes on the jacquard because I had done it once before. And you can see catching the floats, it's more apparent right here where you're actually going across the cable or behind the cable rather. Um, but that's what that looks like on the inside. And it really, you can really see the rainbow of the colors from the inside of the sweater. It's so pretty. Um, again, this was Shades of Earth, Spin Cycle, Dyed in the Wool. Um, I actually got a second and if you go on their website, I used the Spin Cycle uh, Dyed in the Wool seconds that I got. And how you purchase seconds is if you go to Spin Cycle's website and you go to shop and you all the way down to the bottom, there's a seconds tab. It's a mystery bag, so you do not get a lot of say in what you're gonna get. But you can say, ooh, I really like light or dark, and they'll probably try to accommodate what they can depending on what they have in stock. So I, with that order received this skein and you can see it does have some little imperfections here's like where it was a little bit thicker in the purple and in theory i could have just cut that part out and continued on but it really doesn't bother me so i think that it's a really good deal if you want to try their yarns. Maybe you're not so picky. I believe you either get five skeins of some of the um, 50 gram skeins of yarn, and if they have the larger 100 gram skeins, like the Metamorphosis, I think it's, you only get three. But you kind of can look at their website and find out for yourself. Um, but it's a good way to maybe try some spin cycle if you want to be a little bit more budget conscious. Um, it is a little less expensive, but again, you do not get to choose the yarn that you are going to be getting. It's a surprise and surprises can be fun. Um, you could also probably get a friend to also get one or you guys could split a surprise kind of um, order or you guys could both get a surprise order and then kind of do a swap between you if you like some of each other's. So that's another way. I, with this order, I also got mostly, so one was this Shades of Earth and then the rest of my skeins were more in the blue family. And so I had pulled this one out thinking I probably won't put it with the rest of them. I might use the rest for like a twigs sweater um, later on. But I really like it. I like how this is turning out. Hopefully I can finish it quickly so that I can wear it because it's starting to get warm here. Sort of. Today is not a warm day. But it could get warm. Any day now. It's going to happen. I'm in Portland, Oregon. And as it is many days, it is very cloudy today so the sun keeps kind of going in and out in and out and that kind of changes the lighting behind me <laughs> from white to dark often so I apologize if that bugs you anyway so that's my Miserina 
sweater. I really like how it turned out. I really like how the rainbow kind of stands out and how it all came together. Um, yeah, so I think it's really cute. And hopefully I can get this done quickly. The rest of the body is this, the rest of the body is this pattern that's just a little pearl bump. Um, you could also do an eyelet, but I actually just like the way this turned out. And since it's a large gauge, it's kind of a little bit of texture without being see-through, but it's kind of see-through anyway. So anyway, that's that sweater. And the second one, which I really excited, am excited to finish. This just was the first ball of main color yarn that I ran out and so I stopped because I knew I was gonna film this and I didn't really want yarn attached. That was my newest cast on and what I've been prim primarily knitting on, well, that's not true. Half of the time I've been knitting on it. So the other project that I have been working on lately is my birds of a feather shawl. I cast this on as part of Andrea Mowry or also known as Drea Renee Knits on Instagram and YouTube and she is running a March to May knit along right now and last year I cast on a birds of a feather and a dear friend of mine <laughs> wished that it was hers and so I gifted it to her. So I'm making this one for myself, or at least that's the intent for now. Um, and here it is. I've made quite a bit of progress. I believe the last time, um, maybe I had done one lace section. Maybe I had made it to here. So I've basically doubled what the amount that I had knit since the last episode. It's really turning out nicely. So in this pattern, you cast on kind of a large, well, you're knitting it this way. So you're basically increasing, increasing, increasing. And as you increase the spine of the shawl, you're basically increasing, increasing, increasing. And then the spine of the shawl starts to move towards the top and then the shawl is kind of lengthening. So I believe this is how it's actually going to end up. This will be the way it wraps and then this will continue to grow and so on. And eventually it will look more shawl-like, but you're starting to move your increases just to one side and then it's starting to make this point. So this point will continue up and you'll have a triangular sort of, sort of shawl when you're done. So that's how it's looking right now. I really, really love the shawl. It's very light. I'm really excited to wear it. At first I was not so sure about this color together, but I'm actually really starting to fall in love with it. And it's fairly easy. There's a lot of garter sections and this lace section. I would say the just plain garter section on the fingering weight is the fastest. Um, the mohair certainly slows me down because I have to be making sure that I'm actually grabbing each stitch when I'm knitting. And then the lace does take me some, con lace always takes me concentration. I know some people are just so quick and good at it, but I am not one of those people. <laughs> so it takes my concentration um, when I'm making it. So I am very excited to get this done and wear it. Her knit along goes from March to May, as it suggests. Um, so... There's still three weeks in May. You could you could knit something if you want to join in. And if you are um, knitting something for that knit along, please comment below, let me know what you're knitting. Um, I would love to see your project. So that is that. The yarn that I'm using is Feather by Magpie Fibers in the color Soray. Then I'm using Huloco Spun XL in the colorway Sizzle. And it, gosh, it feels like I have knit nothing. This was a large ball. It's 150 grams, but still I have so much yarn left. <laughs> I have a long ways to go. My last shawl, I used every last inch of both of my colors. I think I really had like one foot 12 inches of the spun XL left. So I know that this is getting much larger um, and I have a long ways to go. I don't think my tension is that different than the first time I knit it. I would be surprised. Who knows? We'll find out. 
We'll find out together. So that's the yarn, the shawl. I'm really enjoying knitting it. This has actually been, as long as I'm not on a lace section, great. Like I've been doing this instead of my half and half wrap, which I'm not even going to drag out because it hasn't changed. But this has been a good, re good kind of easy project to have. And actually now that my Miss Arena is out of the color work and the jacquard, ladder jacquard? I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm not sure. Anyway, since I'm not doing that with the color work, it has um, been much faster. I can tell that it's gonna be very quickly finished. All right, so since I last spoke with you, um, it was yarn local yarn store day and so that happens on april 29th and that was a couple of saturdays ago and i went into it of course wanting to support my local yarn store that's what i'm telling myself and i chose to grab summer yarn because really i actually had to go buy this cotton merino i had a little bit left to make the miss Arena the way I wanted to make it, but I don't really have any summer yarn. So I have a bunch of summer projects that I would like to cast on. And because of that, I was like earmarking certain yarns for it. So previously I had talked about it. I will talk about it first. This wasn't purchased during local yarn store day, but I did get it since I last podcast. I think I actually got it like the day after I podcast, but this is my knitting for olive pure silk in the colorway cool coal k-u-l and i purchased it directly from knitting for olive however you can get it from a lot of stores in the u.s i looked around and i would have probably purchased it that way but there were not any in this color in stock in any of my local stores so i got that i think this is going to be or i'm like 90% sure this is going to be a cumulus tea. However, I did see Petite Knit recently released a crew neck version of her cumulus blouse. So it does lead me to believe that she may do a crew neck version and call me lazy. It's okay, you can call me lazy. It would be easier than a v-neck <laughs> because you're not gonna have to knit flat. I'm lazy, I know, I know it, it's terrible. It's not even that much. It's probably a lot, it's not that much. In the reviews for the Cumulus Tea pattern, it seems like everyone absolutely loves the finished item. It doesn't always sound like they like knitting it because it's tiny needles and I understand that. Maybe I will feel differently, but honestly, I think that is why I have actually hesitated. I'm like letting other people's <laughs> But negativity, that sounds really bad. I'm letting other people's feelings on the matter influence me maybe. So I do actually, like, I want this to happen. I, I guess I'm afraid it won't be fun. And I really like knitting fun things. So who knows? If she came out with the crew neck, it would be like a no brainer because that would not have like so much flat knitting, which I, it's fine. It's fine, I can purl, I know how. First stop on local yarn day was to close knit yarn in Portland, Oregon. And I would love to say <laughs> that I have footage for you. Truth is, it was a super sunny warm day and beautiful and people, which was a little bit overwhelming. And I just never even took out my phone. <laughs> like it didn't, I went in thinking, oh, I'm gonna take pictures of things. I, di I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't go there. So I don't have that, but I do have yarn to show you. Close Knit Port in Portland was my first stop. I actually did get a couple of skeins of a DK cotton, which are put away right now um, for maybe a project, I'm not sure. But what I wanted to show you, I absolutely could not leave the store without. I was like racking my brain, like what can I make with this? I have to have it, it's so beautiful, was this Okay, I had to look it up because I know it's not how it's the word looks. This is Hur, Hur Organic, which is the Danish word for linen, flax. It has the most gorgeous sheen of, like, it is so pretty. It is 
more like shiny and amazing than the silk. Like the silk has a kind of internal shine. This is like glorious. And I walked past it and was like, oh my God, I need to have this. It's so pretty. I cannot leave the store without it. It's like such an awesome blue jewel tone. What am I gonna make with this? Back and forth situation. And what I believe I'm gonna make with it is the Uptown Tea by Tori Yu. And she released this pattern, I believe in the last week or so. It is so cute. Let me show you a picture. So let me show you a picture of the original pattern because I'm gonna talk about something else. So Tori's pattern is this really cute cap sleeve tee that has this like lace sleeve. It's so cute. Let me find, there's her in it. Such a cute picture such a cute sweater and it has this gorgeous detail, this lace sleeve, which is like what makes it awesome. So I was like very interested in this tee. However, I probably want more of a sleeve personally. So I was just a little bit on the fence of maybe casting this one on until I saw design by so-and-so and I will link her Instagram in the description below. She did the tee and instead of just doing the cap sleeve with that lace, she actually did the whole tee and she did it in stripes, which like, I want this right now. And so finding that yarn and seeing it, this pattern done this way is a done deal. Like I, I need to cast it on immediately. Um, she also lengthened the sleeve, which was kind of like the part that I was like, oh, I don't know about the sleeve being short. So I'm so excited to cast this on. If you want some amazing inspiration, definitely follow Ashley at Design by So-and-So. It is like, she has the best account. So I think that's going to be what I'm gonna do with this yarn. One negative is like, look, I don't know if you actually have a solution to this, let me know. What I think I'm gonna have to do is ball this, like hand wind it, because I don't even know if caking will make sense. So it's just like falling apart. All of the linen that I touched kind of just does this. It just like is so slick that it just kind of falls apart. And I'm not sure if there's a better solution to keeping it together. Like by hand winding it, would that be better? Should I not do anything and just go for it? Um, I don't think I could like center pull this because it's like literally just collapsing. And this is like right out of the store. Like I picked it up, they put it in the bag and it's already like, I don't even, like it's, I've had to wind it on itself a bunch of times because it's just like somehow disintegrating. <laughs> I don't know how to better describe it, but it's not just, it's not this, just the Isair um, Pur Organic. And this is the color Indigo, if you were interested in getting some for yourself. And I believe is in many stores, but Close Knit Portland does have a, um, online shop so you could purchase it from them if you want and I will include that link. But again, I I was just so taken by the shine and the color of this yarn. I absolutely wanted to make something with it. Okay, so my second stop, and I only actually went to two stores on that day. So my second stop that I will talk about was Ritual Dyes. And I also, I got on this like, I'm gonna just knit everything in linen. So they had this Antigone yarn. It is by Dororum Natura. Ooh, now I'm probably making that up. Dororum Natura, I think is the brand. I will link it below, but it is, the yarn is called Antigone. I think that's what I'm calling it. And this is the colorway Marsala. How pretty is that? It's like a terracotta pink. I don't know. It's really pretty. It also has just like this lovely shine to it. 
again, like, watch what happens. It just starts to unravel. So, again, please tell me, what do I do with this? How do I, how do I knit with this and not get super frustrated? Or maybe that's just, like, the downside of knitting with linen. I don't know. It's going to be so, so so amazing to wear. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna knit with this Antigone yarn is Midori Hirose's White Mountains pattern. I kind of had shared before that she had started knitting it in lighter weight yarn and I was really loving how that was looking. I don't know if I'm gonna use like the original White Ma Mountains pattern or the Mount pa the White Mountains light. Like they have different gauges. I have to do some more research on like how this is gonna happen. I'm open to suggestions or or criticisms, but I'm not sure how, like which pattern I'm gonna follow to get the look that I'm going for, but I think that this will be really nice. And so on local yarn store day, I purchased three of these and I got home and then I realized that I for some reason thought this was a fingering weight yarn. So when I got home I thought this was a fingering weight yarn and it's more of a sport weight and I didn't really look at the meterage, meterage, yardage of the skein and so when I got home and realized oh three is not going to be enough I, I purchased a fourth one and picked it up the other day. But I think it'll be a pretty white mountains. I really love this color kind of matches my lipstick today. But I think it'll be really pretty and a fun, probably quick, easy knit. I love Midori's patterns. They're, obviously I'm wearing one right now. She just does such an amazing job at explaining things and they're clear, they're very flattering. I like how I'm a very loose top person. And so that is also why it's sometimes I think hard to find the right like boxy, summer top because more things are more form-fitting. That's just not my vibe. So anywho, that's what I'm gonna do with this one. Very excited about it. I'm I'm kind of like tempted to, between that and the Uptown Tee, I really don't even know what I'm gonna cast on next. Maybe I'll have to do both of them, which is kind of insane, but also it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'll get it done. I should I should at least finish one of the two products that I'm currently working on before I cast on two more things. Should I? I think I should. Two things. The knitting first that I'm kind of ashamed to admit, but I'm going to anyway. I went to my very first knit night. <laughs> I've been knitting a really long time. I've never knit with another person that I wasn't actively teaching to knit. Like not just somebody who knows how to knit and they just want to knit together. And I was so touched that I met a, I have a internet knitting friend. No, I have a knitting friend in real life um, who invited me to a knit night at Starlight Knitting Society. And it was a little bit for me, <laughs> intimidating because of the amount of people there. Um, but it was also, I'm so happy that I went. One, because I got to meet an incredible knitter. I smell. And also a bunch of incredible knitters. And I got to see like what everybody was making and I can really appreciate and understand why going to knit nights are like such a fun thing because you really do get to share on an even more personal level than this, um, kind of what you're making and talk to other knitters and see like what they're into and what, what everybody's doing and how they're doing it. And it's just really like definitely a way to share knowledge and make friends and I will 100% do it again. I'm so grateful and thankful to Simone for dragging me out and keep asking because it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't the first suggestion that we should meet up in it. But I so appreciated it and I really had fun. So that's my little um, thing that I cannot believe it's taken this long, but it has and I'm so glad that I went. I'm kind of sad that I didn't go sooner. Hmm. Anyway. All right, so I wanted to talk about Lane Magazine issue 17. This was released May 5th 
I'm filming this May 6th. I literally drove to the store as soon as they opened and grabbed my copy. I purchased mine, pre-ordered it at Starlight Knitting Society in Portland, Oregon. I'm sure you can order it at your local yarn store or get a copy now. You wouldn't have to order it, you could just get a copy. Or you can go to Lina Magazine and I will include the link below for a way to purchase it directly through them. This cover magazine, the sweater is called Wave. It is by Thea Vesterby. And I saw this a while ago when they put the previews up and instantly went and followed her on Instagram. I'm so happy I did. She has an amazing account. She really has some very cool designs. And I really love this magazine. It has beautiful like poof sleeves. It's got a really beautiful like poofy sleeve. I never can tell. Um, and a beautiful lace and striped pattern. I think if I were to cast this on, it is knit a, in a DK weight yarn. I think if I were to cast this on like tomorrow, what I would probably make is take this orange color and make it my main color. And then I think I would actually do like navy for the stripes. I think that would be so stunning. I'm not really a pink person. <laughs> don't hate me. I just don't, it just is not my, not my thing. But I really love this. And I think I would definitely use this orange color. It's a petite knit Sandiscarn. Um, collaboration yarn. It's like an orange color. I would definitely use that for my main color because it's a very like orangey red, red reddish orange, reddish orange. Um, and then do like a navy. I think that would be so beautiful for the stripes. I think it would be like very stunning. So that's how I would knit it. So I was going to make that one. The other one I wanted to talk about because it is going to be summer soonish hopefully soon, was I had to also, <laughs> I always try to look up pronunciation for names. And I thought, oh, I know I'm gonna um, say this. Yeah, the way I would have said it would be wrong. So I think I would have pronounced her name Marie Rainier, and it's Marie Rainier, because it's perhaps French. It is French, I think. So Marie Renier's seashells top is so cute. I believe it's a very elegant pattern. It has the V in the front and the back. Um, and then it is finished with a crochet around the armholes and the neck and, or the neckline. It's just such an elegant top. I feel like it's a very classic. It's a very cute pattern. It's knit in a tinsel cotton by Katya, and I believe it is a DK weight, but I could be wrong. But it's really cute, maybe a sport weight. Um, but it's so pretty and just so elegant. Um, I feel like it's something that's like very classic style and that you could wear for many years. One that I actually, between this one and probably the front page would be the one I would cast on next. Um, this pattern is by Elena Solier Yansha, I think. I actually, like, again, I googled how would you pronounce this, and I think it's Elena Solier Yansha. Yansha? Mm, I don't know. I hope so. J Yansha? Something like that. So, it is a beautiful, beautiful sweater. The cool thing about this one is because it has a lace pattern on the front and the back, I feel like it's a very transition, like a very transitional sweater. Um, I also really love this detail on the shoulder, the raglan detail, that it is a cable. I think it's so beautiful. This is just such a customizable sweater. You could make the sleeves longer. You could make the body longer because it looks a little bit like it's maybe a crop or a little bit of a crop sweater. So I feel like you could do a lot with it. It does have a wider neckline. So if that's not your vibe, then I don't know that you could do much with that other than maybe make 
the neckline a slightly bit longer, but I think it's such a beautiful wearable piece. And again, it's that style that I really love, which is more of like a flowy top. So I just absolutely, like every pattern I loved, I wish like if we had hours, I would go page by page. Um, I would say my honorable mention in this one only because it looks like very beginner friendly. I mean, I do like the style of it is this uh, Linescapes cardigan. It's by Veronica Lindbergh. She has a YouTube channel, Kutavakika. She is just, if you haven't watched her, she's amazing. She knit her wedding dress. Like, come on. I actually think Veronica has probably my most favorite knitting video of all time. Like watching her go through the process of making and knitting her wedding dress is so good. So good. Like she's such a good storyteller, an amazing knitter. I really, really, really enjoyed watching that. So if you haven't seen it, I I'll link it below or I'll link it even above. I really, really, really highly recommend watching it. I think as a knitter, you would definitely appreciate all that goes into a knit and especially one for a very special day. So such a good, good magazine. And I will even say like typically in magazines, recipes, like food recipes, I'm like, it's, that's not why I buy the magazine. So it really makes no difference <laughs> whether or not you have a food recipe to be honest. However, the recipes and the pictures, like I'm not even gonna show you only because it will make you hungry. You're gonna need to pause this and go get a snack because they're so good. They always include like a dessert or a drink or something and all of them, the pictures and the recipes sound and look amazing. So should you go buy Lina Magazine issue 17? I think so. Like I really think you could knit many things out of here and certainly wear them year round. So even though it's a spring summer, I, I want to say it's like one of the best spring summers I have seen in a long time. Get it. All of them. All of the patterns are good. How did they do it? Thank you for watching. Let's be friends. Please go over to Instagram and say hello. I want to hear and see what you've been working on. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and give it a thumbs up. That indicates to YouTube that knitters like this type of video and it really helps me out a lot. Thank you so much. Until next time, I can't wait until we meet again. Happy knitting. If you're looking for some more knitting inspiration, go ahead and watch this video next.